I flew it a couple of days ago. Um, they've got these iris recognition scanners now in the airport for your eyes. There was an Irish man working on it. He said, would you like to step forward into the iris recognition scanner? <laughs> you have scanners for recognizing Irish people? <laughs> Do you not use the normal passport system? You've been losing your passports? I'm Irish! Scan me! There's green blood pumping through these veins. <laughs> and I've been getting into some of your terminologies. I was coming through immigration with my passport, which is always a tense affair, isn't it? Because you don't know whether they're going to let you in. And this bloke went, what's the story? I have never heard this expression. It totally freaked me out. I was like, look at my wife going, we need a story to get into this country. <laughs> Have you got any stories? I didn't know anything that's a narrative. You've got some children's books, which we're coming up with something. There were, there were three little pigs. Starry! I love that. <laughs> uh, you shorted it to Starry! <laughs> In England, we just stick to, how are you? Um, which we normally answer with, how are you? We tend not to even answer the question. <laughs> How are you? And we're fine with that. We don't, we don't question it. It's probably the only question you can answer with exactly the same question, and nobody really cares. How are you? How are you? You can't go, can you pass the salt? Can you pass the salt? That wouldn't be acceptable. <laughs> so I've hired a car. I've driven around Ireland, which is thrilling, if not a little bit tense, as I'm reminded of how many people have died on every one of your roads. <laughs> It doesn't make you feel better. <laughs> I'm planning my journeys now to give myself statistically the best chance of survival. <laughs> Do you have it on your Irish sat -navs? Would you like the fastest route or the one you might not die on? <laughs> All right. Do you think that reading statistics is going to make you drive safer? <laughs> if you didn't have the sign, if there was no sign on the road, you would, this is how you would drive down the road. With the sign, you drive down it, and I've been there, and you go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Dublin, are we having a drink tonight? Are we having a drink tonight? <laughs> this is what I love about Dublin. You don't mess around when it comes to your drink. <laughs> there are various clues around the city that you like a drink. For example, when you're crossing the road, uh, you have the green man who's go, and the red man is stop. In England, we have this red man, who like this. And you know you mustn't go. You copy him, you copy him. Unless you try and walk across him. <laughs> and then that would change to the green man, which means go. But in Dublin, you have an additional man. The orange man in the middle. <laughs> Just to make absolutely sure. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? <laughs> We're gonna be crossing any moment now. I'm not gonna take you from stationary to go. All right, get ready. Go, go, go! <laughs> I actually came here a month ago, and um, it was kind of a weird time, because in England, we were going through this situation where we had, we had this, basically, there was killer on the loose. He was on the loose for a week, and he was hiding in the woods, and it was a very tense affair, and the whole of England, all the media, all the police in the country were focused on this one big story, and I came here at exactly the same time where Dublin, and I think this explains the differences very, very well, was focused on another story of a missing penguin. Which led to one of the weirdest conversations I've ever had in a taxi, where I sat in the taxi and the driver went, so, do you think we'll find him? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, I, I mean, they're, they're certainly searching. I know there are out there. But he's used to the outdoors. Yes, apparently he's a survivalist. Yes, yes, he's a survivalist. Poor little fella. You, why, what do you mean, poor little fella? You know, you know, he tried to murder. He tried to murder his girlfriend. Well, he didn't know that about the... <laughs> He's on steroids, you're a I haven't read up on the subject. <laughs> this penguin's a lunatic! Penguin. <laughs> what a fantastic story this was. So, as far as, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, it was a stag night, is that right? And some people broke into Dublin Zoo in the middle of the night in a taxi. The taxi was waiting. <laughs> Dublin taxi drivers, we've learned not to ask questions. <laughs> Just wait here. Are you going to the cash point? Kind of. 
they put the penguin into a carrier bag and then I suppose they just couldn't stop laughing and dropped him off on O'Connell Street. <laughs> <laughs> they found him, didn't they? They found him and they put him back. You can imagine all the other penguins when he came back. They must have been... <gasps> What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was unbelievable. I was asleep. I was asleep. It was asleep. Listen, shush and listen. And the next thing I know, I'm in a little bag. A little bag, a small bag. No, Lidl, the, 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 the German shopping centre. <laughs> and they just dropped me off on the corner of O'Connell Street. <laughs> Were you scared? I wasn't scared. There were signs up telling me that 117 humans had died, but nothing about penguins at all. Did you just stay on the corner of the road? Well, I did, because there was a green man and an orange man and a red man, but there was no penguin, so I just stayed still. 